testimony. The testimony. I have to get to the TRC. It's the truth. Nothing about the truth. So help me God. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. We want to welcome you to the TRC and tell you thanks for volunteering to come forward and explain your experience to us. Thank you. Okay. okay. I will introduce, before you talk, I want you to know us who are sitting up here. We are the commissioners who are supposed to listen to you and take all the information. Sitting on my left at the end is Per Brown Boo. She's a commissioner. Next to her is Commissioner John Stewart. And I am Jerome Voidier. Next to me is Commissioner Didi Dorope. The woman sitting next to her is Umu Sila. And next to Umu Sila is Gerald Coleman. And sitting next to Gerald Coleman is Sheikh Kafuma Kone. So you are welcome. Thank you. Okay. I will ask you just small questions before. You say your name is Adama Kone? Yes. You live here in... I live Kaloken, Kalwe District. You live Kawike. Kaloken. Kaloken. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Are you a farmer or you selling? You working for somebody? Which one? I'm a businessman. You businessman. Yes. Okay. You can remember the time you were born? Born 1967, March 13. March 13, 1967. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank so you. you can proceed now. You can start. Okay, my story is uh, 1990, only lost my father to the war. Okay, then the third war, which is Modern War 93, I was doing a carpentry. And from there, we fly in the bush. After we returned, then one of my friends and myself were doing business with a called Jerome Ulali. He went and gave me $1,700 LD for my brother-in-law, then to call tax for him to put it onto our house. And later on, he said that the wife was delayed, so he was wanted the money, while we were already giving to the children. And they wanted to call part of the tash. And I went, I showed it to him. He was not satisfied. He went and took it to the model. After they took it to the models, they compared me to pay the man money back. And when I pay it back, after I pay the money back, then they said their fee. One of my friends stood, called the Sayer Gray, and when I pay him their fee. From there, they went and entered my house. It was on Sunday. Then they asked me, which of the material you working with here? I was facing my own self door from my house after I left the bush. Then I went and brought my capital tools out because they said if I was not going to bring it out, they were going to harm me. So they went, I brought the material out. I had six bags of cocoa that I was supposed to transfer to Aracos to get some money. Then they went and took that cocoa with 60 dollars CFA. Three thousand Liberian dollars with uh, capital tools. This all with missionary tools. We try to go into it. I beg them. I pay money behind it, and the tools were not given back to me. For the stories in modern world that happened to me, it took my horse poverty, but nothing like affecting any of my family. Nothing happened. Only my my poverty was taken away from me, and some people money that were with me. And the story of 19, uh, 2003 Modern War. Okay. 
Yes, that's my story. Okay, thank you very much for coming to share your experience with us. In the community? Eh? So what experience? No, I said thank you okay. for coming to share your experience with us. Okay, thank you. We asked you some questions yes. just to get things a little bit clearer. Both the 1990 incident and the 2003, they all occurred at the same place, Kaluke or Kaluke. Everything happened in Kaluke. Yes, in Kaluke. Okay. And you say you lost your father in 1990. Yeah, 1990. What was the name of your father? Yeah, the name is Dauda Kone. Kaula Kone. Yes. How did he die? Okay, after the walking, we fled to Ari Coast in Galabo. And he took sick. There were no upper hands to take him to hospital. At that time, Arito was not used to help the same way they were used to help. Sometimes when somebody is sick, we send ambulance and carry them to Tabu or San Pedro. There were no car. And after two weeks, he went and died. Do you know what year was that? 93, August 24. 1993. Were there other people you know who died because, not because they were shot or they were beaten, but just because they couldn't get medical assistance? Yeah, because there were no hospital in Glabo that I was able to treat him. Yeah. And there were no upper hand. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Boo. Thank you very much for telling us your story. Yeah. It shows how the people just came and took your things. Now, do you remember the names of the two soldiers or remember the names of the people who took your things, who told you to go to your house and take your tools and money? I know every one of them. We what a name? By person. One James Jika in Harper City here. James? Jika. James Jika. Yes. Where is James Chico? He lives in Harper, yeah. You know what part of Harper James Chico lives and what he's doing now? I think he was, I think he's an immigration. He's an immigration officer? Yes. Yeah. yes. yeah, okay. Immigration. Is it Chico or Chico? Chico. Okay. An uh, immigration officer. Yeah. So at least the people with immigration officer know. And who's the other person? Now, what did James Chica do? Tell us what did he specifically do? What he really did to you? Uh, James Chica was the one, after the S2 sending, I was trying to apologize to forget what the truth when they were taking the money, but he said the truth was supposed to be taken because they did not mandate me to work after the war and I was facing my household and they were not having materials that the carpenter tools they were requesting for and I was having the tools. And how he come that tools for me. So you got to your tools. Yes. If you had the opportunity right now, because the TRC is supposed to bring victim survivors and alleged perpetrators or offenders together yeah. to give a clear picture of the past. With the part of making everybody happy in the end, what would you want if Jim Chico were to come to you for us to bring Jim Chico before you? Or even if he doesn't come, what do you want? What recommendation that you want us if, to recommend about James Chico? Okay. Thank you very much. As for me, from 2003 up to this time, I hold Jim Chico the same way as my brother. I'm a Christian. I'm an assistant pastor in my church. The Bible says when somebody does something, we should forgive them. So I decide to forgive James Jico because I was not in my own mind because they were soldiers. And they were supposed to do what they were not supposed to do. And they did what they were not supposed to do. Yes. Thank you very much. And you say now you are, you are an assistant pastor in yes. your church? Yes. Okay, then that means you have read about the word of God and to forgive. Yes. But do you 
also believe that before you can forgive someone and for reconciliation, that person too should repent? Yes. So do you think that Mr. Chico now has repented or have you confronted him with this? Or? <coughs> The king lot of time he went to Carlton for market and I called him to my house, I called him. After I called him, they try to interview him. They asked that he carry on in the war. And he tried to apologize that he will not want to do it, but our true is commander, which is Zon there. Oh, thank you very much because you see, well, what you've shown that there's some reconciliation and forgiveness going on even before we do the end of our work to make recommendations. So we thank you very much. Now the other person, because what Jiko, there's someone else. You, yes. Where's the commander? Yes, the, the commander who is the S2 zone there from Zredru. He's in Zredru? Yes, yeah, zone there. Zone there. There. <coughs> Pastor, you can spell our last name for me. Huh? You can spell our last name because I understand it as bear or dare. Dare. D E H. Yeah. Any question? Yeah? Any yeah. question? The question that John there, yeah. he's in Shred now. Yes. You know, you know what he do? He what he doing there? Yeah, this, he said he's working with certain NGO, but I never see him in person after the war. They say he working with where who? Certain NGO. With a certain NGO. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Kone. Yes. Thank you. Um, you say what year this happened? 1990. 93. Uh, 2003. Modern War. 2003. Yes. And this, uh, this James Jika, he was fighting with Model. Yes. In 2003. Yes. And also Zodé. Yes. In 2003. Yes. And where this happened in Kaloke? Yes, in Kaloke. Who was the overall commander there? The commander. The overall commander in Kaloke at the time. That's the Zodé was his all overall commander. It was the all overall, uh, overall commander. Yes. So besides the money they took from you, what other things they did to other people in the area? Uh, well, uh, the stories I can explain about my own better because the other people I can't explain for themselves. Yeah, but what did you see? Did you, did you didn't see anything? They only came to you. They didn't do anything to nobody. You didn't see anything? Yeah, this thing, but my own that happened to me, I want to explain well. Yes, but tell us about what you saw besides what happened to you. Yes, as I said, mostly our, we fled in the bush after we came in town. The one that happened out of our presence, I cannot explain it. And the thing that happened, sometimes I used to be on my bench working, facing my house door. But sometimes things that used to happen, I already used to see. So what you see, you're able to explain it better. But what you hear from somebody, you're not able to explain it better. It's got to be the I know. When you fled in the bush, I yeah. came back. Did you notice any house in town was burned? Houses burning? Yes, when you came back from the bush, any of the houses you met in town, any house yes. there was burned? Yes, I saw some neighbors' houses burned. By who? The same model? They were burned before you fled into the bush or after you fled no, into the bush? After we came from in the bush, then we met about four houses burned in Calopin. But the houses were not burned before you fled into the bush? No, they were not burned. When, when, you, the when you came back from the bush, Yes. All of the people that you left in the town, your friends, your neighbors, everybody came back or some people were missing, some people were killed? No, nobody killed in my community that I was living. Nobody was killed? Yes. Anybody was taken away to carry a load? No. Nobody was taken away to carry a load. Yes. Anybody was forced to join the soldiers? Yes, some children that, it's, they were not forced, they were willing because some of them were not having food so they were supposed to join to eat. Oh, they were not forced. Oh, they came and they came and said, anybody who want to join, you're welcome to join. Oh, okay. And people join. Yes. I see. Thank you.
He said that the son, the son dead. Son dead. What was his position before Mode War? And what was his position during the time of Mode War? Well, I never knew him when he never gone or when the war never came. But through the war, I saw him. He was not living in that time? No, he came from Swaziland. Is it not true that he was uh, S2? Yes, he was an S2 commander in Calabria. S2 commander for government soldiers or S2 commander for murder? For murder. Murder? Yes. So he and James Jigong. Jigong. Yes. All two call themselves S2, S2 commanders. Huh? They call themselves at the time as S2 commander? Yes. The S2 commander and the deputy. And you say, what was the reason when they took your tools yes. and took money from you? One of my friends, they called Jerome Ulali. He left Plymouth now. We used to talk our business from there. He asked me to ask my for in love then I was me to call his dash. Because we were in the bush. Sometimes we used to have some people call stay for them because there were no jobs finding food to eat. So he went and gave me one thousand seven hundred Nigerian dollars for the cash to put it under our house. And then I think after three weeks he said the time was delayed, so he wanted for me to refund his money. So I began to apologize to him that he gave me time. He said the time was exhausted. So he was wanting his money. So for me, I was having some people money and I was trying to establish small business. Uh, buy cocoa from that way, get an article you sell it. Then you buy something like you drive good, you bring to you sell it. So from there, I went, I went to one of my friends who they call the CEO Gray. He went and helped me with that $1,750. I told him, after I come from Arapus, I will give you your money back. He went and paid the money to them. And from there, now they say I should pay their fee $4,000. So I started begging, started going from all over to all over. We talked with them that I was not able to see that $4,000 because I was not working. They okay. Say, okay. Do you know the word about these two people now? The people that did that act? Yeah, the James and the son. The, the James is all living in Hapoya. What kind of work are you doing? Immigration. You're working with immigration? Yes. And the son there? The son there is Israeli. Is in Israeli? Yes. What kind of work are you doing there? So you want the NGO worker. When you see them, you were able to identify them? Yes, I know them. Okay. Thank you. Just one, one last question. How long did you stay in Africa when you crossed the border? Hi. Say how long I stayed? Yeah, in Africa when you crossed the border. Okay, 1991, and when I came back in 1998, August 4th, we evacuated from Brazil. So I stayed in Africa for four years during the Gila War. How was life, refugee life, looking like? Africa? Yes, for me, I, I can say I was trying because I was, I was skilled man. So I used to help myself. Okay, thank you. We want to... Huh? Thank you. Okay. We want to express sympathy to you for the loss of your father and tell you that the information you have given us about how individual citizens suffered at some point in time during the war is very useful, especially the Model War, how you were taken advantage of and you were deprived of your livelihood because they took all your equipment and all of that. But we thank you for coming.
Okay. Is there anything last that you want to say before you leave? Huh? Is there anything you want to say lastly before you leave? No, I would say thank you to TRC for their coming to remember us that why people did to all in the war, sometimes it's uh, for them to interview, if whether you get by my against us, uh, or the, against them, or you don't get by my against them. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Our next witness is Cecilia W. Gage.